for your majesty, your excellences, ladies and gentlemen. I don't need to read this, in fact, but let me have at least have a look at it, recall what I wrote. So the telephone call informing me that I was to be awarded the uh, Abel Prize arrived just as I was uh, finishing up uh, writing a paper that had taken me six or seven years. So uh, so t and, uh, I have to get into the way of thinking of this particular letter. So I had been, so it was the end of a six or seven year struggle uh, with particular problems, with problems of various kinds. And it was something that took me every day, I, every day is a slight exaggeration, but not a very great exaggeration, for five hours or so from five or six o'clock in the morning until noon. And I was getting very tired of it, and I was very glad to see it come to an end. And uh, I actually, during it, at various times, I swore to myself that I would never undertake such an enterprise again. And indeed, I recognized that I was hardly young. I was indeed quite old, and that the time had perhaps come to think of other things. There are things that I had perhaps wanted to do in the course of a lifetime, not very ambitious things, but just things to amuse myself, to edify myself in some sense. So in the study of history, various kinds, modern history, ancient history, history of the world, history of the universe, and things like this. So uh, I, I decided that uh, time was coming to an end for any kind of great exertion. And of course, the conclusion from that is that if the Abba Prize was awarded to me in the hope that I would uh, continue my efforts, <laughs> Uh, it was going to be disappointed. <laughs> so I hope very much that uh, it was just for what I'd already done because I don't think much more has to come. I think I would like to reflect on other things, easier things, for what time is left. Now, I think that that's all I need to say, but there's something else that I should add. First of all, there, I would like to recall, not everyone is fully aware of it, I think, that much of the mathematics that, that I, with which I have been involved was made possible by Harris Chanda, who is often neglected. So we could perhaps think today for a few minutes about Harris Chanda, who was uh, one of the people from, whom, from whose papers, at least, I learned the most about mathematics. And we could also think, just to amuse ourselves, perhaps, uh, that there were a number of other influences on my mathematics and on the math and contemporary mathematics that on this particular occasion we might want to remember. The first is Sophos Lee, indirectly, through Harish Chandra and through other people. The uh, representation theory is an essential element of anything I have proposed and representation theory is a representation theory of continuous groups, and they are generally referred to uh, Sophus Lee as the originator. And of course, there's another Norwegian on the list of people who have strongly influenced uh, the domain, uh, and that is, uh, my goodness, now and again, names list slipped me, and this is someone I've known for 50 years, and it's a recent, uh, Charlotte, tell me, uh, Selberg, of course. Oh, when, when I shouldn't forget the name of Selberg, and uh, another Norwegian who strongly influenced the domain in which I have spent the most of my time. And there's only one last thing. Everyone is, of course, aware of the influence of Abel is on mathematics, but one should also be explicitly aware that he had an influence in particular on the domain that we're discussing today. And as a reference to it, a very gentle reference to it, but very enlightening reference. It was, I read it only recently, and it was enlightening for me, and that is 
the uh, introduction to the section in Fe of Felix Klein's History of Mathematics in the 19th Century, in which he, in particular, discusses some of the first ideas of Abel on the integration of elliptic integrals. And that's all, about, that's all I wanted to say today. I hope it was enough. Thank you very much. <laughs>